Welcome back to Knoxville as we roll along with the NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Championship press conferences and we bring in St. Louis, joined by Kyla McMakin, Julia Martinez, and Brooke Flowers. Uh, we'll open it up to questions at this time. Coral Hall with the Knoxville News Sentinel. Uh, Julia, you guys are athletes coming off of a great tournament run. What do you feel like was working so well for you guys that you can carry into this tournament? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, we definitely run a run, and you know, we won the games that matter the most. Um, and I think just those, our entire team's confidence just went up, and everyone was having fun. There was a lot of joy and excitement during practices and during games. Um, yeah, and everyone just leveled up, took a big step up, and um, yeah, we won our conference uh, championship, and now here we are as a team. We're, right, we're so excited. We can go down the line. What does it mean to you all to be in the NCAA tournament? Whoever wants start to start. OK. Um, <laughs> it means a lot for me, very special moment, this being my fifth year, last year of college. Um, so just to have gone through this entire season with this team and to be here with this group of people that I care so much about, uh, we've been through a lot together. So it's very special, very humbling, and a very gratifying experience. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's just such a dream come true. I feel like when I was a little girl, I would watch the, uh, the older student athletes who would play in the tournament, and I was like, wow, that's just so exciting. On the big stage, everyone's watching. So the fact that I'm able to do it here with this team and this group of people that everyone really cares about is just so special. Um, I guess I kind of have a different experience than both Brooke and you just because last year I was able to go uh, to the tournament um, I just am grateful to have the opportunity again. I know a lot of sometimes that could be a once in a lifetime opportunity for players. So it means a lot to be here and to do it, you know, the next year. It's nice to be like, okay, I've been here before. I kind of got that jitters out of being in such a tournament. So it means a lot to be able to come and come back here. Uh, Knoxville in general is one of the best places for women's basketball and, and what it has represented, the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame is here. Uh, does that add anything extra for you all to be able to play here for the opening round of the tournament? Um, I think that just kind of adds to the experience. Uh, going into it, you know, we weren't sure who we were going to play. And I think like my biggest hope personally was like, I hope we go to like a good basketball city. So I think we're in one of the best, you know, just being here. We got to go to the ba Women's Basketball Hall of Fame this morning. Um, that was a fun experience. So it definitely, you know, was a little cherry on top being able to be here. Uh, UMass played in this gym uh, earlier this season, really gave Tennessee all they could handle. You've beaten them twice uh, this season. What do you take away from maybe the matchup that UMass had here that they were able to play really well? Julie, I'll start with you. Yeah, I mean, I think we definitely watched some of that film. Um, but it's, it's nice to see opponents that are in our conference that we've played before and that we have won um, play against the exact team that we're about to play against. So. Um, just looking at it in a scout wise, it's definitely was it's helpful for us to see different schemes of what we're gonna do. But I think it's just I mean UMass played with them and stayed with them until um, pretty much to the end of the game. So it's like all right, like people just like us, we can do the exact same thing and we can end up in coming off with an actual win. This is for any of you guys, but obviously Rakia Jackson, Jordan Horson are one of the hardest combos in the country. What have, what has been the discussion this week of how you guys can stop them or, or slow them down? Um, I think something that, you know, makes our defense kind of just difficult is just it's chaotic. <laughs> Even to us, sometimes it's chaotic. Um, so just throwing a lot out and, you know, we have like Julia who runs around everywhere and is, you know, like that gnat you can't get out of your face. So that's just something uh, we try to do. We try, you know, that's how we, UMass being the leading scoring team in our conference, that's something we try to do is just kind of just be all over them. And that's, you know, their coach ended up saying, you know, they're just everywhere. So we just want to be everywhere on the floor and make, you know, every shot we can difficult. Therese Walker, the Associated Press. Uh, yesterday, you guys arrived, took a picture over next to the Pat Summit st uh, statue. You walk in this arena, there's lots of orange, there's lots of banners. Uh, do you have to maybe focus and, and tune some of that out to, to focus on the, the game, the opponent itself? Or do you take a moment to, to soak some of that in? Um, I would say, like, take it in. I would say look around you, look at the, you know, the greatness that has happened here and embrace it. You know, why not have one of your best personal and team performances 
on a historic court like Tennessee. So, you know, look around at all the greatness that's around you and then do what you're great at. So I think that, you know, that's my goal and I'm sure that's all of our goals as we play tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, I think definitely at first it's take it all in. I mean, what an, what an experience. It's so exciting to play in this arena and just all the, the history that's been made here on this court. But then I think, you know, once the, the, once the, the clock starts and the ball goes up in the air, then it's focus, game time. I mean, we're going to prepare like we do for every other game. Um, so, yeah, just definitely take it all in and then it's game time. I think we definitely, um, you know, the history is such a beautiful thing to learn, but don't come in with the mindset that we're just lucky to be here or we're just, you know, satisfied. And so, you know, this is a historical place, so why not come out and make history, you know, with 13 being a three? So that's something, you know, we're trying to focus on is not just being satisfied that we got here, but keep going for it. Any other questions? Tennessee obviously has a lot of size and length. Is a good rebounding team. How big do you feel like the battle on the boards will be tomorrow for you guys? Rebound for your life. <laughs> <laughs> really big, yeah. We, we're, we've been saying since, I don't know, we found out. No, before then, they keep telling us rebound for your life. So we'll just be walking until it will come and be like, rebound for your life. So that's what our motto has been for the last week or so is just rebound for our lives. For any of you, uh, this game's going to be on ABC. Uh, how nice is it to be you know, part of a women's college basketball game that's going to be on ABC? You know, uh, the UConn follows up after this and part of the doubleheader uh, to, to be able, on that national stage. I mean, all these games have been televised the last few years, but to be on broadcast network, not just cable uh, or, or streaming network, uh, how does that? You, you like that opportunity as well to help possibly make a statement? I mean, yeah, I think it's definitely what an, what an opportunity it is for us to show who St. Louis University are, who we are, what we're made of. Um, and yeah, it's exciting. I think it's definitely such a, like I said, we get to show off like who we are and what we're made of. Um, but yeah, I think it's, we're just going to take it like any other game, but what an, what an opportunity we have. I think just the opportunity for women's basketball in general, like, you know, media attention towards women's basketball is not nearly in the same comparison as men's basketball. So to be able to kind of perform at the same level like a men's team would, it's nice to have finally getting media attention towards women's basketball and the same dominating performance as a men's team. Any other questions? Excellent. Thank you all so much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Coach Rebecca Tillett will be with us shortly.
We continue with the coach of St. Louis, Rebecca Tillett. Coach, if you don't mind, uh, start us off with uh, your thoughts about being here in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, really good to be back. Um, really good to be here with this special group of women uh, from St. Louis University. Just so excited to have the opportunity to compete at this level. Um, I think the story of this particular group is a fun one to tell, especially if you look all the way back into the non-conference season and what this team was able to accomplish together. Questions? Core Hall, the Knoxville News Sentinel. Um, your players in here earlier asked them about rebounding. They said rebound for their lives. You know, as a coach, how do you prepare for a team like Tennessee that has so much length and size on the boards? Yeah, first, love that they said that. Uh, critically important in the execution of the game plan tomorrow. Um, you know, both teams are nationally ranked in offensive rebounding, us and them. So anybody that likes, you know, the offensive game in terms of offensive rebounding, it'll be a fun battle to watch. Um, but I think, yeah, obviously the size differential, um, especially in some of the defensive things that we want to try to do, will be at disadvantages. Uh, so you've got to rebound for your life to come up with that possession for our team. I think one thing about this team is they're going to play hard. They're going to be tough. Um, you've got to really pack that for the NCAA tournament and especially against Tennessee. Uh, Coach, you mentioned uh, being back. This is your, you've been here before. How does that experience maybe help you as you guide St. Louis through this, their debut a, a, at this point in the season? Yeah, I hope throughout, you know, my entire career, I'll have the same kind of mindset. They were just teasing me in there. Coach Tiff on our team, on our staff, has a phrase, act like you've been there before in, in many things you do in life, right? And I was certainly acting like a, a kid in there as our women are looking at the great gear that the tournament's given them and even Dove sponsoring and, and giving all these products um, and just soaking in the moment, soaking in the joy of each part of the journey. Um, so even though I've gotten the opportunity to do it again, it's my first time leading this group and a lot of women on this team's first time and I hope that I always get to see it through their eyes and, because it's really about them and the experience for them. Kylo was here last year, you know, with a different team. But what does it say about her that, you know, she, two years in a row she's been to the tournament with different mid-major teams? And how, how important could that experience be that your leading scorer has been here before? You know, she was just showing the socks. She has the socks on from last year's tournament right now and then just got the new pair of socks. Um, you know, Kyla is a special scorer. Um, she's shared that this year has been challenging for her and given her a lot of opportunities to grow with the transition to St. Louis and the A-10. Um, you know, I was just talking the other day to our leadership about if you put Kyla on the floor, opponent's game plan, right? We played Baylor early in the year. She took an open three on film. You see coach going, just don't let her be open. Don't let her have that look. Um, so anytime you have the opportunity to go into a game with a scorer like that, who can hit big shots, you know, doesn't get overwhelmed by the environment, and has seen so many coverages, really, really glad she's on our team. We have a question from Zoom. Let's go ahead and patch that in. Uh, Natalie Hovren with the next. You know, what went into your preparation this week, and were you able to make it to the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame like you said you were going to? Good to hear from you, Natalie. We went this morning. We actually ran into Toledo there. So really incredible that the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame, through a partnership with the WBCA, funds the ability for our teams to go and experience that. Um, so we were there this morning. I kind of got stuck at, at one station. I wanted to stay there as, as long as we were there, but had to keep moving. They have you know clips of coaches giving pregame speeches, you know, all these Hall of Fame coaches. That's just, you know, I could spend all day there. Our women had a great time. Um, I think just the education piece, the video they show at the beginning really is a long historical context. And you could hear women behind us in the movie theater aspect of the Basketball Hall of Fame saying, oh, I didn't know that, I didn't know she did that, I didn't know she did that. And isn't that the responsibility, especially of those of you in the room, right, to tell the story of these women? And you're doing that right now. You're telling the story of St. Louis and the other great teams that are here. Um, I think we all have a responsibility in that because the way the game's story is told is going to have a direct impact on how quickly we grow. Hey, 
Coach, you mentioned that growth. Uh, this game's going to be on ABC tomorrow uh, as part of a doubleheader for the women uh, in the first round. How nice is it to see uh, you know the, the tournament getting to the point where some of these early games are not just on you know cable but on na over the air broadcasts and, and helping get that extra exposure for the game and uh, the way ratings have been going up these last couple of years. Yeah, great point. I think you know to have the opportunity to showcase our game at that level and in the early rounds because as we've already seen on the men's side in the tournament there have been upsets. And that's what draws people into tournament coverage in general, right? You can root for the underdog. You can root for your favorite players. You can hear these stories of these women that strive so well, you know, hard to be good in the classroom, to be good on the court, to be good in their communities. And so each opportunity that we take a step forward with our game draws in new fans and new viewers. For years, I've been fortunate to go to the Final Four, both in my coaching. And then even when I was a high school coach, we went because our convention was there and we would go to learn. Those arenas have been sold out for a long time. Not everybody knows that, right? Not everybody knows that part of the story, that there is a huge following of women's basketball. Well, the more we tell the story, it's only going to continue to grow. I like to use the comparison. What if we did a side-by-side -side of where the men's you know, basketball was at this point in their career and where we are in this point in our career? And you'd probably see pretty similar trajectories of how the growth of the game goes. I think we need to spend a little bit more time thinking about that and continuing to cover and give the opportunities for the stories to be told. I think Natalie has another question. Yeah, uh, what do you think the keys to the game are for you tomorrow and how did you uh, work to prepare for those in practice this week? Yeah, without giving away too much, definitely the rebounding for our lives is critical. We, we have to compete in the rebounding game um, to compete in the game with Tennessee. We do think we can score the ball. We'll have to stay really fearless in that pursuit due to their size. Um, and we want to, you know, they want to score a lot of points. We like to score a lot of points. I think for fans, it could be a really fun game to watch in that aspect. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you so much, Coach. Thank you. St. Louis practices at 2.50. The first 15 minutes of that practice will be open to the media.